All right. All right, you Aquaman role-playing bastards. Here is Aquaman build for Divinity Original Sin 2. With the restraints that the game puts on character creation, I actually managed to create a pretty decent Aquaman build. And yes, I know Aquaman is not a dwarf. In this case it is. And here it is. What I did with stats, which is basically the most problematic thing with this setup because we want to do hydro damage and we want to do physical damage with the spear. We want to wield spear to be true Aquaman, right? I've simply divided points equally between finesse, intelligence and wits. I know that's not the best setup, it never is, but if you want to play such characters as this one, it's something you got to have. I also have pretty high dodge rating from leadership, some from gear and also got dodge rating from dwarf racial talent. Wits is important to increase our critical chance, cause I want to make that multiplier as high as possible. So I went with maximum two handed, seven points into scoundrel and the rest I divided to warfare and hydrosophist. So this is how it looks now. I only put one point into Hydro and everything else I got from gear. Cheat Commander really helps here because you can combine gear that you want. It's still very expensive to buy all these pieces, but Cheat Commander can be used in that regard very efficiently. And I think it's a really good addition to any gameplay. If you only use it to buy gear that you want. With Two-Handed and Scoundrel are critical multiplier is now at 235%, which is really, really good. Usually I would focus all my points into warfare, but in this case I want my physical attacks and magical attacks to hurt as much as possible when they crit. So this is how we maximize our damage through the crits. With this whole setup I get 66% critical chance. It can go higher if we focus with more, but then we lose on the damage, so I don't think it's worth it. But this balance setup really does work surprisingly well, you will see. So to recap, Hydro, Warfare, put around 5 points into both of these and then boost it through gear further. Scoundrel and two-handed as high as possible and make two-handed at max level. From Talents, Elemental Affinity, Executioner, Hothead, Savage, Sortilage, Opportunist. This is the perfect setup that you want. From the skills, you can see I've used Cloak and Dagger, Bone Cage, but I've used Bone Cage mainly because we are only two on that Paladin Bridge and I did that Paladin Bridge without Lone Wolf on any of these two guys. So Bone Cage was there to save my arse when in need. And I've added also Blood Rain, because Blood Rain can also be frozen, same as Rain. It can be used to great effect with global cooling. I've used most of the spells from Hydro Tree, every damaging one, plus some restoration ones, and Rain. Obviously you have to have Rain. From Warfare, typical stuff, get thick of the fight. It can boost tremendously damage from magical and from physical attacks. We are putting some points into Scoundrel, so might as well use Chloroform. It's resisted by magic armor and we can crowd control people very efficiently with Chloroform and other stuff that we have. Hydro is excellent at crowd control, as you'll see. And I've also put Adrenaline for when I need it. From gear, I went with finesse based gear focusing on wits as much as possible and dodging. Here I put giant flame rune of power because it gives me more intelligence. And here I put mystical giant masterwork rune that gives me also plus 3 to wits. How would you build this from early game? It's possible to play this throughout the first region. Just gotta divide points through finesse and intelligence and that's it. Throughout first region I would put same amount of points into Warfare and Hydro. Scoundrel and Two-Handed only come in play when you start building that crit chance up, but that is usually when you hit Driftwood. So during the first region I would focus on Warfare and Hydro. From Talents, 
definitely all skilled up bigger and better throughout the first region when you reach level 2 and onward. For the first, talent, executioner and opportunist or elemental affinity 2 are very very good choices. And that's it, that's the whole build, really simple. Now let's go poke some bastards. Here we are on the paladin bridge, no lone wolf on any of my guys. The other guy is just there to buff me, to fortify, armor of frost, clear minded and haste. That's all I need. And he didn't even do any damage. He just killed one guy that had 100 HP left and that's it. Everything else was done by Mr. Dwarf Aquaman. Anyway, your goal here is to create as much water surface as you can. And then freeze it. You can see these fools, they are dropping down like idiots constantly over this ice. Just don't forget to put nails on your boots so that you don't meet the same fate. Your physical attacks and your medic magical attacks are really decent. You're gonna focus your magical attacks on warriors that have low magic armor and your physical attacks on enemies that have low physical armor. This is good example of what Aquaman can do. When enemies are bunched up together, stuff like Deep Freeze, Winter Blast, Hail Strikes can do stupid things. Adrenaline helps here too when you're in such a situation to exploit it to the maximum. That's really it. It's a simple Hydro slash Spear setup that deals equal damage. So you can choose your targets, it works perfectly in mixed damage group, especially if someone else has rain and if two characters have rain plus raining blood, that way you can create a lot of surfaces that can be frozen. Enemies have a lot of trouble getting to you while the surface is frozen. I was crowd controlling these bastards with ease thanks to the spells and thanks to the surface. They will constantly be chilled, frozen or knocked down. Whenever global cooling is off cooldown or it's gonna go off cooldown the next turn, then use Ice Breaker before it. That way you can do additional damage. Just be careful you're gonna damage yourself too. So water resistance is kind of a must. But anyway, you can use Ice Breaker and then in the next turn do global cooling again. Water surface will not disappear if you use Icebreaker. Then you create another frozen surface and you're back at square one. Enemy is still struggling to get to you, you're still freezing everyone and they took some additional magic damage. Perfect. I did clear a lot of these paladins quickly and then I had to clear these defenders and they were not easy to clear with only one magic wielder and one any damage really dealing party member so it was tough to bring them down but eventually I did manage to do so thankfully thanks to crowd control abilities that way they weren't able to retaliate later on I even ignored them and then focused on the elementalist and then got back to defenders to kill them it's surprisingly effective build I did not think it would be this good but there you go, I split stats throughout finesse, intelligence and wits equally. And this is the result. As I said, no lone wolf here, you can see from the damage, damage is too low to be lone wolf. And the only thing that guy did was buff me the whole time, my other party member. That will be it for this video. Thank you all for watching, special thanks to my patrons and people supporting me on Twitch. And see you all bastard soon. I hope you enjoyed the build.